days Should've known better than to think you to handle that a better way Close your eyes and turn your mind What a struggle just to make it point proven The whole damn world is blind That was like a little mini launching pad. Edla did great eating tree tracks, did what they're supposed to do. Man, I love the KM3s. They got them at about 12 pounds today. And they're just, just getting the right footprint to gain traction for granite surface like this. Well, these are called the steps. Steps, and what's your job? Just to guide people up them. Any advice for those watching? Don't drop the clutch. <laughs> That's good advice. Speaking from experience. <laughs> You've never wheeled before. No. That's all the East Coast. The West Coast is on the other side. First time for Rubicon, and got the rest of our group here from uh, Florida. We came through Vegas and then hit all the trails in Southern California and made our way up to the top. 850 strong. What's your name? Tommy. Tommy. Rumor has it you guys have been on the road for a little while. We have. About a month. Uh, those, up, those two up there about a month. We've been on the road about three weeks. What's your name? Mike and Gino. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, California. Thank you. How many times have you been out here? First time. Hello. What are your names? Greg. I'm Dylan. Dylan, what? And that's Tyree. What are you guys doing out here? Helping the rock rollers, getting the Jeeps through. What's this obstacle called? It's called whalebone. Whalebone. Yeah. This tree right here, when it first fell, all the branches kind of fell off. It was kind of like a, uh, a whale. your flat fender here then? Uh, that's my dad's, but I was driving, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys got parts and tools and whatnot? Uh, tools but no parts. They're, they're coming with parts, we're waiting. Do you know if the other Jeeps, uh, Dallas America's Jeeps are out here, or is it just you There's, two? Just, we're the only two that are gonna be on the trail. This All one's right. always on the trail. I'm one of the trail mechanics, so it's always out here. So I'm just doing maintenance while I'm waiting on parts. So yeah, put new springs in the other day and I'm just retorquing the U-bolts.
do you say, Chris? You want to be one of those YouTubers that overhypes everything? Uh, no. No, am I? You gotta watch us, Crossley. They might have shot. <laughs> but Sheila's get around the billy bong, and they gotta watch when they get in the water near the edge. Yeah, it's very, very dangerous. That is a horrible Aussie accent. <laughs> so my Aussie friends tell me. All right, I'm gonna try to bump start. It. Our heroes. <laughs> We are on the Rubicon Trail. We're on a part less eventful enough for me to get to ride instead of hike, film. And we are having some good conversation and we're hitting some good little rocks, bouncing us around a bit. But here's, here's the most important part that I want the viewers to really understand. So sometimes when you watch these videos, you get to see a lot of Jeeps and you get to hear about a lot of people on the trail, but you don't get to hear a lot about us. And I want to describe to you what it's like riding passenger with Mr. Chris Collard. You see, we'll pass a tree and he says, this reminds me of a time in Zambia when yada, 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 something crazy happened. And then you'll pass a rock. This reminds me of a time in Australia when something crazy happened. This reminds me of a time in Antarctica. This reminds me of a time on the moon. And, and it just goes on and on and on. And I will tell you that is Probably, so far, my favorite part of this trip oh, is hearing man. all of these great stories. That's humbling, man. I just made all that stuff up. You made all that stuff up. You guys, we are coming up on the Ellis Creek Bridge. You can probably see it out the back here. Um, and there's a little uh, porta, uh, porta potty or a, a regular pit toilet here. This Ellis Creek, we used to camp here. We used to actually drive across the creek, but. Um, really and nice bridge after years of land use challenges um, they forced us to put this million dollar bridge in big kudos to El Dorado County Rubicon Trail Foundation uh, friends of the Rubicon and uh, we'll see gonna stop here maybe use the facilities and we'll be back We are at the base of what's called Walker Hill, or Lower Walker. It's a pretty good little section. Got some steep slabs, a couple of large loose rollers at the bottom. And definitely a specific line. You're gonna see we got a spotter up here, one of the rock rollers from Jamboree what monitors this spot. What's your name? Travis. Travis, where are we right now? We are at uh, Walker Hill, bottom of it. You got any advice for those? Watching how to get up this thing? Uh, just try not to go up one side too much and stay over, give it a little when you need it. My name's Dan Newman. Dan, where are we at? Uh, this is the middle of Walker Hill. What's the biggest hiccup on this part of the obstacle? Honestly, oh, yeah. as long as everybody just stays to this side of the wall, it's a really easy walk right up the mountain. But if you go over to the far right, you're going to hit a lot of the bigger rocks and you're going to hang up your different. God, it was just loving this trail. I'm loving this trail. Hope you guys are loving this trail. Uh, soup? soup? Yeah. That's a good name. So your job is to keep people from getting all mixed up in the soup. Try. That area back there is uh, kind of just the original trail, but on the left is this big old rock pile. It's called Soup Camp. It used to be for Soup Bowl. But the story goes that somebody in a Jeep was heading up the, uh, that section on the left that used to be a lot more tame. But everything came out of the back of the Jeep, bounced out, a bunch of Campbell's Soup Cans laid on it. So it got this name called Soup Can. Oh, shit! So at this point, we are on some kind of hill. I'm James Sweeney, I'm a rock roller, and I'm working here on the bypass of Little Sluice. 
on some kind of rock. And the rock seems to be quite large. We are in a bunch of Jeeps and we're driving up this rock. And the challenge is avoiding some of these smaller rocks that could really mess up your ascent of the bigger rock. And there's a Bronco. All right, everybody, so it's not a Jeep thing, it's a Bronco thing. We just ran into Shelby Hall, uh, granddaughter of the famous Rod Hall. She's making her own tracks right now. But Shelby, like, tell us about what you're driving and like the trail and yeah. I like to think it's an off-road thing. It's not a Jeep thing, it's not a Bronco thing, it's an off-road thing. Um, so this is my first time on the Rubicon in my Bronco. It's been uh, a few years since I've been on the Rubicon Trail and my first time on this side of the Rubicon Trail. So this is all new territory for me. Um, I am in a wild track, a 21 wild track. Uh, so I don't have a sway bar disconnect. This baby is really built for the desert. Um, so we are really putting it through its paces and it's been phenomenal. The only upgrade I've done is I have BF Goodrich KO2s on it, killer. Um, we're having an amazing time. This is really just for fun to get out and uh, explore. And it's really like bringing me back to my roots. I have been on the Rubicon Trail only with my grandpa. And um, we get to come and actually see my grandfather's plaque for the first time also here on the Rubicon. And you know, I'm just like hearing all the words and the coaching that he's given to me over the years as I'm like a little bit terrified going over these huge obstacles and I was even saying to Brady how crazy he was driving a manual uh, H3 Hummer through this the last time we came together through the Rubicon Trail. You know, he was just an incredible person and amazing off-roader. So it's been really fun working with Ford the last four years and the Bronco is an incredible off-road vehicle. So I'm, I'm having a blast. That's can't awesome. can't wait to get to the Woo! Springs. Yes, the Springs. What are we going to do there? Have a beer? We uh, maybe have a beer, but definitely jump in the water yes. and just enjoy. All right, guys. Shelby Hall. Or do you Bronco? Daniel, where are we at, Daniel? We are at Thousand Dollar Hill. Thousand Dollar Hill, is that what they're paying you to uh, guide us down the hill? Nope. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, con Jeep and people. We have heard of uh, Manifold Cookie. We've heard of Sun Tea. And we've got a couple minutes here, or actually quite a few minutes here. And I figure, why not take some of my favorite Irish breakfast tea and drop it on the hood for some Sun Hood Tea. Rubicon style. That's right. Yeah, what's your name? I'm Wilson, man. How, what's your name? My name's Liam. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to Liam. meet you. What are you doing out here today? Uh, I'm pointing out where to get Jeeps to go so they don't get stuck. And what's this obstacle? This is Arnold's Rock. Alright, so this is uh, known as Arnold's Rock. And it's because a guy named Arnold. Always man this rock, so a little down. You can see you got a broken vehicle over here, so they're taking the bypass. Not really any easier, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a goodie. It's a goodie. first started coming up here we didn't have lockers we didn't have low gears we didn't you know the 33 was a big tire back then so you learned how to 
I'd really read the terrain, figure out, you know, what the, the best route was for your vehicle, your wheelbase. What are you doing up here? What am I doing? Yeah. Facilitating the use of the trail. Are we using it properly? You appear to be. You're not stuck or broke. <laughs> now, our, um, job, our job is to continue the flow. What happens when people break like that or whatnot, we were 75 feet. We were stuck this morning. You can't get around them. Our our job as rock rollers are to keep everybody moving. Keep them rolling. Keep them rolling best we can and do minor repairs to the best of our ability. If it's outside of our ability, we call the mechanics and have them work on it like they're doing on that blue rig right now. So we have... Uh a couple times mentioned uh, Rubicon Trail Foundation, Friends of the Rubicon, El Dorado County, the OHV Commission, and Green Sticker Grants. Uh, well, they've done a lot of work on the Rubicon over the years. Big kudos to everybody that's been involved. One of the things that uh, was a challenge for this trail was sanitation. Uh, a lot of little white flowers everywhere, um, but not anymore because now we've got a whole bunch of these little pit toilets. Hey, there's Liam. Yeah. He's going to be the Vanna White modeling the pit toilet. And if you're Arnold, you have an Arnold's Rock. Uh, you also have Arnold's Rock uh, facilities over here. Nice bathroom. So pretty cool thing about the Rubicon. They've just done tons of upgrades over the years on the trail, infrastructure-wise. And that is one of them. We are coming up on the, what we call the slabs. Turning out to the old sluice was just out here on our right side. And uh, this is the granite slabs that lead us to Buck Island absolutely stunning so wonder where now. liam is liam's just like running the trail out here oh, yeah. hey <laughs> is there a video man on the ground all right we got a big drop off coming up here big left turn three point turn and then dropping off this vertical ledge I was thinking about this one for the last month as I was uh, preparing Edla for the trail. I'm not sure, they might have stacked some rocks in there, but sometimes it's like, keep your brakes on hard and just let her slide off. Somebody threw a bunch of rocks in there, thank you. Would have buried my bumper. <laughs> Something happened inside a steering box. I'm dirty. People come out to California for Disneyland for some cool rides. And I think of all the Disney Park rides, this one's my favorite. Is it? Yes. It's amazing how they have replicated the Rubicon Trail. It's lifelike. <laughs> Just shocking. So you were telling me about... Oh no. Serious driver error here. I'm just gabbing away and not watching what I'm doing. Something about Disneyland. <laughs> talking about Disneyland. Yeah, so this is the Granite Slabs. A little bit off, you know, a little bit of camber ride here all the way down. Um, but just absolutely beautiful. Off in the foreground, we've got, or in the background, we've got uh, the Buck Island Reservoir. You might have to do a little flyby on the reservoir when we get there. Maybe even jump in and cool off. Maybe. A little bit of shade we're having right now feels really amazing. The scenery is Still amazing. And uh, Jeep's climbing rocks. You just gotta be ready for amazing scenery for the next four days, guys. Oof. That is what we've got. So if you haven't been on the Rubicon Trail, um, we're gonna show you there's these little orange like uh, highway markers that you'd see, uh, yellow highway markers. And we're way back in the day to mark the trail 
budgets were limited, right? So they basically would just have an oil can, jerry can full of oil on the back of the vehicle and they'd open up, let it drip and he'd have an oil drip line all the way, all the way to Tahoe. But that, yeah, that practice went away. And um, as we graduated and realized there's, you know, environmental concerns with that. And uh, so now there's these little yellow markers and you see the uh, Rubicon Trail, coming up on one it says RT 4.5 and that's a mile marker 4.5 so believe it after all this we've only got 4.5 miles and this is also a turnout Rubicon Trail Foundation has purchased land down here in the bottom of the valley super awesome and uh, good place to go down they, they do allow the public to go down there and visit um, I think you can camp down there so not only are they doing great strides to you know, protect the trail. They're investing in it in, in uh, with hard cash, buying you know chunks of land as they become available. That's what I've been really impressed by is this, this trail. It's obvious that a lot of people have committed their finances yeah. to yes. maintaining and um, you know just improving this mm -hmm. trail, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> Just a little dancing on the Rubicon. It was a big uh, hail ball that landed on it. Yeah, what? yeah, big hail ball. Are you serious? Yeah, we were doing a tour in the land of the giants. <laughs> no, that's one of the original dents from the Darien Gap okay. from the expedition in '78. Yeah. 78. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Pretty cool. We are about 150 yards from Duck Island. You can go into the hole if you want. So coming up on mechanics camp, might be a good one to uh, chat with some of the mechanics. See what's keeping them busy today. So we are at Buck Island Mechanics Camp with uh, Dustin Chernow. Dustin, like, tell us what happens down here. We pretty much fix whatever can't get fixed out in the trail from here to Loon. It gets drug into here and we repair it so they can make it in the springs. So what are some of like the interesting, more technical fixes that you've had to do, at least today? Today has been relatively simple as far as electrical wiring issues, carburation, like fueling issues, and, um, a couple, you know, U-joint breakages, driveline repairs. We have a, had to weld one differential yoke back together. As vehicles have been evolving, like the repairs have definitely been getting a little bit easier. Um, we're seeing a lot less of the flat fender Jeep era coming through and the older CJs. So, like the one we're driving. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, how long have you been uh, one of the mechanics? I think this here? is my 16th or 17th year, if I remember correctly. So, got some serious tenure. You guys. Don't charge anything to fix somebody's Jeep. Nah, we're but just on you, a donation system. Yeah, so. donation system, and you got like a good supply of parts down at main camp. Yeah, main right. camp, and then, you know, we, uh, you know, Scott from um, Metal Cloak brings in some, some parts and driveline components mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I bring in some stuff, and, you know, amongst all the other crew, we all bring in whatever we think is normally going to break for the year. And then if not, we try to radio into main camp, and then they bring it over via parts runner and then get them repaired. But it's changed a little bit. They used to use a helicopter to run parts back and forth. Yeah, now they're using trials bikes. Yeah, now they use trials bikes. So yeah. a little bit tougher when you're like flying a different on a tri trials bike with a differential in your backpack. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> but we've welded plenty of those back together through the years. So this is uh, Buck Island uh, Mechanic Camp and with Dustin. Uh, always a pleasure to come up and to see all of the work that you guys do on everybody's cars. I mean, it's just like, it's. A, it, I think it gives a peace of mind to a lot of people that aren't really mechanically inclined yeah. and it keeps bringing them back and yeah. you guys do it usually with a smile on your face. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, everybody comes in, they're always happy to get help. Yeah. We're always happy to help them, so it's kind of an even trade. Awesome. Well, cool. appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Cool, man. Have a good one. All right. Hey, gun Jeepin' people. This is me without a shirt. I'm really white. And I'm about to jump into this water here. Oh, yes! That is good! 
Check this out. I had socks in my pocket this whole time. So that's Buck Island. And uh, it was originally a, a cirque uh, lake, which is a depression from the uh, glacier period 10,000 years ago. Actually, as was the granite bowl earlier that we went across earlier this morning, that's uh, basically just was carved out of, from uh, the glaciers descending from the Sierra Nevada. And so Buck Island was a small depression that was a lake and the power, the utility, turned it into a reservoir. They put a, built a small dam, and uh, it's basically for water storage for PG&E and the uh, hydroelectric program in California. Oh, wow. Start coming my way. What'd you do, cut a tree and land on the hood? Yeah, a giant snowball. Yeah. A little bit that way, there you go. Is that real? It, <laughs> straight ahead. I'm gonna take that chainsaw away. Keep straight, don't turn yet. Yep, I know it. You're looking good. Yes, you are. Yep, yep. Nice and steady right down. Right where you're at there. Straight down a little bit. That looks good. Nice and steady. That's the worst of it. Well, Liam, the sun is starting to get a little bit low on the horizon. Yes, it is. We're here, and there's beer at the bar, which is hopefully just a couple hours away. Come on. Hang That's with right. us. That's, how many miles have we gone? I don't know, like five? <laughs> a couple hours away. This is a tricky one right here. There's a rock on the front of the diff preventing it from going forward. In fact, it actually lifts the rear axle off the ground as you start to go forward. And then you can see there's a rock right there behind the diff preventing you from going backwards. Somehow we've fallen into a V-notch and uh, it is not coming out of there. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was a, a special kind of stuff. Yeah, I got over the first lip. It was like a B. <laughs> got up for the first lip, and then differential just caught right in, could right in the bottom of it. Couldn't go back. Couldn't go forward. And all of the excitement, I forgot to film how we fixed it. The recovery. The recovery. Well, we'll get it. Hopefully, not next time. <laughs> Long story short, snatch block to a tree, and we pivoted the Jeep off of the rock sideways. It's excitement. So now we are heading down the grade to uh, the big sluice. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of stopping and uh, I think the most disappointing part of being stuck was we didn't even have the pleasure of holding up the whole group because we went <laughs> right back to being stopped again. So, oh well, a lot of people out here, a lot of people learning, a lot of people having fun. It's just how it goes. Mm. Right, so this, is what's known as the big sluice. Back in the day, there were street signs all over, all over this, uh, all over the trees on this turn. It's got a big 180 degree turn here coming down from Buck Island. And this is just the half of it. This is like, I don't know, this is the part that goes eastbound. Then we go, start heading westbound into some big narrow rocky sections like it hasn't been narrow and rocky already so it's a serpentine route you don't have huge tires and uh lots of clearance um you gotta worm your way through this stuff just nice and slow though just taking it easy it's kind of gravity feed because we're moving heading downhill yeah there we go so that's uh the first part of it the second part's up here about 100 yards all right, more big sluice. We ran into Corey Kaiser fuel pump issue. Not much I could do for that, so I asked if I could play through on a little squeeze bypass. Just gonna leave us here alone. And uh, we're gonna head on down the trail. That was awesome.
door. It's a rock right there. What's going on, Chris? Well, we figured out how far we can go on a stock tank of fuel. And it's uh, about 50 yards shy of the Ruby Don Springs Bridge. Use the shaker hose to uh, drop by, dump five gallons, just splash some fuel in here. That'll get us to camp, which is about a mile away. Oh man, beautiful. Beautiful. And that was the Rubicon Springs Bridge. But you can hear us, we're going whoop whoop. We made it to Rubicon Springs. <laughs> you did it. This is the we got people been talking about all day. And beach chairs and tables and yeah, I know it's dark. But we're here. And we're gonna head to the bar. Have a beer. Yeah. All right. Oh. We made it to Rubicon Springs. First beer of the day. Kelts is going to be our bartender for the, the next couple of days, so awesome. All right, cheers. Subscribe to see more episodes of the 70th annual Jeepers Jamboree. We're just getting started.